First question, fourth row on the left. Hi, Al. Um, how would you say you guys match up against the Warriors? I mean, knowing how they try to pass the ball around and try to find the open shooter, is it going to be tough trying to defend against them? No question. Um, uh, you know, they're a great team. Um, been doing this for a lot of years. Um, the, the way that they move the ball, uh, the, the way that they play just presents a lot of problems. Um, so, you know, it's definitely a huge challenge for our group. Second row on the right. Hey, I'll, uh, two quick ones. Just how's it feel to be here? You had this long journey to get to this point and a lot of moments where you felt just short. And then number two, it felt like this whole Celtics run kind of started with Marcus getting drafted. You joined a team that he was on. How have you just kind of seen him grow into the leader of this group in many ways? Um, yeah, well, it feels great to be here. Um, uh, you know, just still soaking everything in, um, being here in San Francisco and being in the finals. Uh, it's something that's, that's it's, uh, it's exciting. Um, and then uh, w with Marcus, uh, so happy for him, um, his resiliency, how he's continued to work and stay patient for his opportunities. And um, now him obviously being our starting point guard and leading us this way this year, winning defensive player of the year, um, just a lot of great things have come together. And, you know, we're at the point that we want to be. Um, and, and now we have a great opportunity in front of us. First row, first seat. Now, when you look back at December, um, things look bad with this team. Internally, how bad did it feel at that point? I know it's not one thing that pulled you out of it, but what are the things in your mind that pulled you out of it? Well, there were, there were several things, but, um, you know, in, in December, uh, November, December, I feel like we were hit with, with you know, the health and safety protocols and, you know, guys in and out of the lineup and different guys coming in and out. And us, uh, Coach Udoka, you know, new staff, new team, new group, all, us trying to figure things out. And um, I know the expectations were high, but, you know, things take time. And, and I remember talking about it back then. It's like, hey, you know, we're working towards, uh, you know, something and, uh, and we have to be patient. And, you know, a lot of the times we want things to happen fast, but it just doesn't happen that way. And, and for us, it took us, in my mind, it was like the end of January that I felt like, I was like, wait, I think, you know, it's starting to come together. I think we have a chance. So, uh, you know, those days were very dark, were, were, you know, were very hard for us. But my whole thing was, let's just keep moving along, you know, keeping things in perspective. It, it was very difficult, it was. Um, but it was just like, let's just keep working. Um, uh, I believe in this group. I think, you know, Coach Yudoka believed in our, in our group as well. And, and we just stayed at it eventually until finally we were able to, you know, break through. Fourth row on the right. Hey, Al, uh, this being your second tour of duty with the Celtics, uh, obviously you're coming with a certain type of expectations. How have those expectations mirrored what you uh, are dealing with from a reality standpoint? Like, has this been better than you thought it would be this year? Um, so, um, you know, once the, the trade happened here and everything, um, you know, uh, I texted with Jason a few times and, and, you know, I told him that, you know, that I was looking for, for us to be in these positions, um, you know, this coming season. And, 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 um, and I really believe that, um, you know, when I share that with him, I looked at our group um, I, I saw the potential there. Uh, I already played with these guys before. I know what they're about. And I just knew that, you know, if we got, if we got it together, that we were going to have an opportunity, we were going to have a chance. And, and it's something that I, that I believed from the beginning. Um, and, and we just stayed at it, just continue to work. And obviously in the season, you're not going to be talking about these things, but I, you know, we talked about it before the season, I strongly believed it. And then throughout, we just kept at it, highs and lows, just continue to work, continue to stay solid. And uh, it doesn't surprise me. Uh, I'm, I'm really, really happy, really grateful to be at this point with this group. What do you remember about those early moments when the trade was, was a discussion point and then it started becoming more and more real? Those days in between when it was just something to talk about and becoming real, what were your emotions like? What were some of the things that were happening kind of behind the scenes that you know, kind of got you excited about the prospect of coming back to Boston for a second tour duty. 
Yeah, so um, uh, excitement for me, but then after that, I just kind of got off of it because I didn't want to, you know, think too much about it. And I was like, I'm just going to continue to work, do what I do. Um, and then when I got the call from Brad, it was really, really exciting. Um, I, I remember, you know, I was driving home with my family from visiting my mom um, in Atlanta, and we got the call, and you know, we're all we're just all screaming in the car, just really, really excited, really, really grateful, and uh, and right away we're just you know making plans about heading back to Boston, doing the physical, doing all the stuff. So it was a really happy time for our family at that time, and especially for me because it's it's where I wanted to be. And, um, and yeah, that's, that's that. You Third row in the middle. Al, from the time you got drafted, I think what's been asked of centers or big men in the NBA has changed dramatically. Um, you know, you got to your time in Atlanta. When did you realize the league was headed in a different direction? And how have you been able to adapt? How have you been able to make sure that you're the kind of player that can stay on the floor? So yeah, that's, 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 a, that's a really good question. Um, uh, it, I feel like the NBA has it, it has changed a, f a couple times, uh, the, the different ways I should say since I've been you know in the league and you know when I first got in, it was being played a certain way, more of a post up bully ball kind of kind of way, and then it started to shift a little bit. Guys, center shooting mid range a little bit more and things like that. I started to do that, and um, and I remember. Um, going into my third third year fourth year um our, our gm in atlanta at the time rick sun uh told me he's like hey you're gonna have to you know uh, it was actually actually after one of my injuries i had a pec tear and um and he was like you're gonna have to change the way that you play um because uh you know the game is, is physical that way you're not gonna make it you're not gonna make it that many years if you keep you know because i was you know very physical trying to post up against these guys that had 20, 30 pounds on me and things like that. And he was like, you're going to have to start, start shooting, start practicing the corner threes. You got to start shooting it. You got to get out of your comfort zone. You got to start shooting that. I already, I could already shoot the mid range a little bit, but he was like, start doing that. And then um, uh, Danny Ferry came in uh, a few years after that um, and started to change the whole culture in Atlanta. And they were very adamant about, uh, with Coach Budenholzer at the time, to for me to shoot threes and to get out there and practice, and did not judge me, just let me go out there and just shoot them away, and and um and that was the way that I had to start to change my game in that way, and then it became more of when I got to Boston with Coach Stevens was like, okay, well now you're going to handle the ball more at the top, you're going to make decisions, and you got to be able to stretch the floor out, but also you have to be able to roll to the basket, you have to be able to do different things so for me it was always keeping an open mind and understanding that this game continues to change and if you don't change your game then you almost become irrelevant you know and, and you can't stay on the floor so the challenge for me has been always finding ways to to stay relevant to be on the floor find a way to be useful and obviously a big part of that is defensively and defensively uh, i went from guarding in the post and having to stop a guy like Dwight Howard or something like that to starting to defend guys in the perimeter, having to switch, defend guys out there, prove myself, guard guys out there, guard guards coming in and out. And, and that's just the way that the game, it's, that's how it's evolving. So that also entails preparing yourself physically, you know, mentally, all those things to be able to do those things on the floor. Last question in the middle. Sorry, I'll lean over for the mic. Um, to take you away from the finals for a second, you, you mentioned Atlanta. You played for Darvin Ham there for, for five years, mm -hmm. just got the job with the Lakers. Um, what are kind of your memories of him as a coach at that point? Did you see future head coach um, for him and, and kind of what are they in for with him? Absolutely, man. D Ham, that's, that's one of my guys. Um, you know, just so much respect for him. He was one of those guys um, in Atlanta that, uh, that, that kind of took me under under his yeah. wing, um, actually along with Kenny Atkinson, uh, and and you know both of those guys. But 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 Darvin, uh, extremely hard worker. Um, uh, we really got after it. He really challenged me to be better on the defensive end. Really challenged me uh, to just to be a bit better player in general. Uh, Darvin is about as good a, a good a guy as, you, as you're gonna see and uh, a 
big competitor. So um, extreme competitor. The Lakers are really lucky to have a guy like him. Um, he's, you know, he, he's the kind of guy that you want. Thanks, Al.